Hi, my name is James and I'm the Director of Communications and Engagement at CARE and today I want to talk about SIM. It's not a word we tend to use very much, maybe even in our churches, but to understand true Christianity and the good news of Jesus Christ, it's essential we understand the doctrine of SIM. To help us do so, we'll go back to the opening chapters of the Bible, to Genesis chapter 3 in particular, and we'll see how sin entered God's perfect world. But first, a quick recap. In Genesis 1, we have the creation account. In six stunning days, God creates the heavens and the earth. He brings order to chaos, and on the sixth day, he makes human beings in his own image. God then blesses human beings with a mandate to procreate and to fill the earth with more image bearers, and he gives them the responsibility to steward the world. From Genesis 2, we zoom in on the creation of Adam, the father of all the living, and the creation of Eve, the mother of all the living. God places them both in the Garden of Eden and tells them to watch it and to work it. The plan was that Adam and Eve would be vice regents under God, with a commission to extend the paradise of Eden across the whole world. There was one command that God gave them, one boundary he put in place. In Genesis 2, 16, 17, we read this. And the Lord God commanded the man, you're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then we get Genesis 3. This is the account of the fall of Adam and Eve and the cosmic consequences of their decision to rebel against God. It all begins with a serpent. We're told that he was more crafty than all the other wild animals in the garden. He comes to Eve and he asks her, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The well, first question we need to answer is, who's the serpent? Now, Martin Luther, the German reformer, would say the serpent is a real serpent, but one Satan had entered into. And theologians and commentators, they've all agreed that the serpent is used by Satan, that is, the devil. So Satan is an angelic being, but one who has rebelled against God already and rebelled against him at the very beginning. And he uses the serpent to tempt the woman and ultimately the man as well. And notice he starts by manipulation and deception. In his first words to Eve, he completely twists what God says, and he sows the seeds of doubt about God's word. Now, in Genesis 3, 2, Eve responds strongly. She corrects the misrepresentation of Satan and tells him what God really said. So Satan tries another strategy. He now flatly contradicts what God has said. So in Genesis 3, 4, we read, You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Satan lies and entices by offering Eve the prospect of becoming more like God. And he suggests that somehow what Eve has already got, peace with God, fellowship with him, Adam as a husband, a beautiful, perfect garden paradise at home, being made in God's image, that's not enough. She deserves more. All of history turns at this point. In Genesis 3, 6, we read, When the woman saw that the fruit was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. In these two verses, we see Eve and then Adam succumbing to Satan's temptation and in doing so, they sin. You see, this is what sin is. The word in the Bible we translate as sin means to step outside the boundaries that God has put in place. And you see this in Genesis 3. God placed a boundary about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve were not to eat from that tree. All other trees were available to them. And God put this boundary in place for their protection and for their good. He is a merciful and good God. The command wasn't bad news, it was good news. Yet Adam and Eve rejected God's word and instead believed the lie of sin. They believed the false idea that no harm would come to them as a result of eating the forbidden fruit. Now, as Genesis 3 continues, God responds by bringing judgment. Firstly, he condemns Satan to ultimate defeat. Secondly, he increases Eve's pain in childbirth. Something beautiful and glorious becomes painful and hard. Third, he tells Adam his work will now be incredibly difficult. You see, stepping outside the boundaries God has put in place brings huge consequences. Sin always brings judgment. 
And the consequences of Adam and Eve's decision to disobey God was cosmic. As a result of their sin, the whole creation comes under God's curse. In Romans 8, for example, we read that the whole of creation groans under this judgment, longing for liberation. As part of God's response to Adam and Eve's rebellion, they're expelled from the Garden of Eden. They're banished from paradise and angels guard the entrance to prevent them getting back in. Sin, stepping outside God's boundaries, leads to separation from your creator. It creates a distance between you and God because he's pure and holy and cannot look or tolerate sin. Ultimately, sin leads to hell and eternal punishment, which involves eternal separation from God's saving love, grace, and mercy. The Bible teaches us that sin is not just something we do when we disobey God. It's not just breaking his law, breaking his word. It's not just idolatry. It's also a power that reigns over us until we're saved. But what's so striking is that even in Genesis 3, there's so many evidences of God's grace. And the most obvious is the promise of Genesis 3.15 where God says the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Here is the promise of a deliverer. Someone will be born who will defeat Satan. And in the fullness of time, that promise was fulfilled in Jesus. God's son is the Messiah, the anointed one. He came into this world with power to save. He's called the second Adam. And unlike the first, he obeys God perfectly. And the result is human beings can be saved from our sin. Our guilt can be removed. The power of sin can be broken. All we need to do is believe in Jesus, who lived a perfect life on our behalf and then died in our place. You see, unlike the first Adam, the second Adam succeeded in every respect. Music